Hi LEGO fans, I'm back with another one of the new for April 2018 LEGO Star Wars sets. This is one of the new vehicles featured in the Han Solo spin-off and today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 75209 Han Solo's Land Speeder from LEGO Star Wars. The 345 piece part count includes two minifigures and whatever this thing is. From left to right we've got Kira, Han Solo and Corellian Hound, which seems to be lacking a neck for some reason. We've also got this very cool hot rod style land speeder which seats two minifigures. As always, the back of the box gives us a little bit more detail about the set. We've got a hidden storage compartment for secret cargo, a removable hood so we can get to the engine, a pair of spring-loaded shooters which we'll demonstrate later in the video, and it looks like we've got a set of wheels underneath to help this thing glide along. I don't plan on buying all of the solo sets, but this and the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon particularly appealed to me. I really like the styling of this land speeder and I think it'll look great alongside Luke's land speeder in my Star Wars display. Cool! I can't wait to get this set built so let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got three numbered bags of Lego a 95 page instruction booklet and no sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build Hans Land Speeder and today this is going to be a 60 second speed build. <laughs> And here's a completed build. This was pretty straightforward to put together and took about 30 minutes. My first impression of this set is that it doesn't look quite as cool as it did on the box. And that Corellian Hound is tiny, but it's not his fault. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at Hans Land Speeder first, and then we'll get up close and personal with those minifigures. And of course that little white beastie. So this is Hans Land Speeder, and it's definitely a very unusual build. In fact, it even looks like it's been in a nasty accident and had the side ripped away. Looking at the Land Speeder head on, you can see the grill at the front and what I think might be an air intake for one of the engines. Han is well known for making modifications to his vehicles, including the legendary Millennium Falcon. And it looks like he's put some turbo intakes on the top of the hood. The colour choices for the Land Speeder are very cool with this dark navy blue and white accents. This kind of reminds me of the performance blue colour they use on performance Fords like Mustangs. Those grills continue all the way along the right side and give it a really sharp look. But one of the most interesting features about the Land Speeder is that large spoiler on the back. It wouldn't look out of place on a Subaru WRX. The spoiler starts out on the top and then wraps its way around the left hand side of the vehicle. The design of the spoiler is really nice and even uses some transparent studs to give the illusion that the spoiler is not in contact with the car. As you can see there are two transparent studs at the top and a transparent slider at the side. These just help to give the whole thing a little bit more strength without detracting from the overall aesthetics of the land speeder. I'm not certain if the round pieces at the back are thrusters or exhausts, but we do have an engine under the hood which we're going to take a look at in a moment. Another thing you'll notice from the back are the two transparent red protrusions. These are the rear ends of the spring-loaded shooters and we'll be demonstrating those in a couple of minutes as well. As well as modifying vehicles, Han is well known for smuggling and it seems that he uses the land speeder to help him pursue those endeavours. We've got a secret compartment at the back here containing one of these blue crystals. 
Those were also present on the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, and either these contain spices being smuggled from the Kessel Mines, or something else that's yet to be revealed in the Solo movie. Here's a look at the other side of the land speeder with all that exposed pipework. You might notice the bottom part of a Lego pivot piece near the front. This might be another indication that the land speeder loses some of its siding in an unfortunate accident, and maybe we'll find out more about that in the movie. I did mention that there are some interactive features on the land speeder. The first of those I'm going to show you is the removable hood. This panel simply lifts off, revealing the engine underneath. I don't know too much about land speeder engineering, but I'm guessing when you have a big wrench under the hood like that, you've probably got some reliability issues. Other features underneath the hood include this rather nice transparent green fluid container, and the engine itself is completely removable. I love the fact that this lifts straight out so Han can perform maintenance, and it's also really neat that the air filter or turbo on top protrudes through the hood. The land speeder is equipped with spring-loaded projectiles, and it's really nice that we've got this bay underneath the hood to store the spare. Yeah. Lego often like to use unusual coloured studs in places where you won't see them, and it's really interesting to see the use of lime green, pink, and even some transparent orange under the hood. With the engine reinstalled and the hood replaced, let's take a look inside the passenger compartment. I was really pleased during the unboxing to find there was no sticker sheet. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know I'm not a fan of stickers on Lego sets. And it's great to see some really nice custom printed pieces here. We've got two 2x1 printed tiles for the Landspeeder's control mechanisms. There's also a vent on the dashboard, and a very funky retro steering wheel. In fact, it's not a wheel, it's just got a pair of handles. It certainly looks roomy inside the land speeder, and I'm pretty confident that it's going to pass the minifigure test, but there's only one way to find out. Han and Kira both fit inside very comfortably, which means the land speeder passes the basic minifigure test. There's nothing worse than getting a Lego vehicle where you can't get the minifigures inside comfortably. Although it kind of looks like a car, the land speeder actually hovers above the ground. And that's no fun for playing with because Lego haven't invented a hover system yet. However, this is definitely no Hot Wheels car, but it does have some small wheels on the bottom which gives it quite a nice pleasing action. Here's a look at the underside, it's a really solid build which makes it great fun to play with, but we've also got two pairs of very small wheels in the centre. Those wheels sit ever so slightly proud of the base of the land speeder and give it a nice fluid motion. <coughs> oh yes, sorry Han. The other feature you might have noticed under here are the pair of spring-loaded shooters. These fire from underneath the land speeder, and it's going to be interesting to see if those can be fired unimpeded. To do that we simply give the tail of the projectiles a little tweak, And they go quite a long way. When I first took a look at the land speeder, I wasn't overly impressed. And I think the reason might be because it didn't have any minifigures inside. It looks a little bit like a big lump of plastic when you've got no context of what it is. Once you put the minifigures inside, it clearly becomes a vehicle. And as I've played with this and got to know all the features, it's actually grown on me quite a lot. But before we wrap up and do final thoughts, let's take a look at those minifigures and of course the Corellian beastie thing. Both of these minifigures are exclusive to the 75209 Landspeeder set. These guys grew up together on the planet of Corellia, which of course explains why we've got the Corellian Hound, and it also explains why Han Solo flies around in a Corellian light freighter YT 1300 series, aka the Millennium Falcon. Here's the young Han Solo as played in the new movie by actor Alden Ehrenreich. Interestingly, this minifigure does not get a new facial print. In fact, if we refer back to this Han Solo from the Ultimate Collector's series Millennium Falcon, you're going to see exactly the same facial print and exactly the same hair. Now, keep in mind, this minifigure is based on actor Harrison Ford, and this one is based on Alden Ehrenreich, so not looking good for the young Alden there. But a really nice minifigure nonetheless. He's wearing black pants and what looks like snow splattered up the front. But in fact, I looked at the uh, the Wikipedia to see what the climate was on Corellia and snow didn't really feature. So I'm imagining this is going to be during one of the rainstorms that they have. And that's probably going to be mud splattered up the front of his pants. He's wearing this holster on there for his blaster, which you always see Han Solo wearing. Really nice metallic finish on that as well. And then a very nice printed torso piece. On the back there, we've got a little bit of detail and white was probably not a good choice of color with all the mud on that planet. As you can see, it's all got splattered here. Really nice hair piece as you saw a moment ago. Very confident facial expression. And on the back, we've got his teeth bared. And that is a really nice and exclusive Han Solo minifigure. Moving swiftly along, this is Kira, spelled 
QI apostrophe RA. Kira is one of Han Solo's childhood friends and they grew up together on the planet of Corellia. I did do a little bit of research about Kira online and there isn't a lot of information out there, which makes me wonder if she's actually part of the Star Wars Extended Universe or whether she was just created for the Solo movie. In any case, one of the clues about the plot line here is in this minifigure she's got short hair and then if we look at the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon version of the same character, she's actually got much longer hair. So obviously that doesn't happen very quickly so I wonder whether we've got part of the movie set in the early days and part of the movie maybe a little bit later. It will be interesting to find out. She is dressed fairly similarly to Han Solo, uh, obviously part of the same chase scene with the land speeder and she's got the same mud splatters up these pants here which is very nicely printed. She's got a nice red top on and this fleece lined jacket here very nicely crisply printed and some more details on the back. Is that metallic? Almost looks, yeah, there's a little bit of metallic there in the, the collar of the jacket. Obviously we've got this very short hairstyle, almost looks like one of the characters from The Walking Dead with that hairstyle. Uh, very nice facial expression and if we turn her over, looking a little bit uh, less enthusiastic there. But that is a really nice minifigure and I guess we'll very soon learn a lot more about the new character Kira. And finally we got this cute little chappy. He looked really big and aggressive on the box, but he's really tiny. Just look at him there compared to my thumb. Now he is about the size of a Lego dog, except he's got this rather large hump on the top of his head and some really nice molding there on the sides. And then some tiny, tiny printing. I don't know if you can even see this, but the, the eyes are very, very detailed. Really nice printed mouth on there with the snarling fangs. And yeah, all together, this is a very nice little thing. And it is a little thing. Let me just bring back in one of the minifigures to give you some context. As you can see, this thing is considerably smaller than the minifigure. But overall, it's a really nice mold, some really nice printing. And that is the Corellian Hound. So that was set number 75209, Han Solo's Land Speeder from LEGO Star Wars. There is a companion set to go with this, which is set number 75210, Moloch's Land Speeder. And I'm probably going to give that one a miss because there's too many other cool LEGO sets to focus on. But I really wanted this one to display alongside Luke's Land Speeder, and I'm really quite pleased with the result. It's a very compact build at only 6 inches long and 3 inches wide. Those exclusive minifigures are always a compelling reason to buy a set. And the Corellian Hound was kind of fun, if not a little bit small and not as scary as he looked on the box. I believe you also get a pair of those with Moloch's Land Speeder, which comes in at a higher price point of $40. This set comes in at $30 and I think it's reasonable value for money for a licensed set. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I think the lights are about to change and I need to go referee a drag race. So all that remains for me to say is thanks a million for checking out my review today. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.